Oh, hell yeah. Howdy, partners. Welcome to the greatest podcast known to man. As voted by Clint Eastwood, this is Stop Crying Poser. Quit your belly aching. Pull your britches up, young man. Um, <laughs> first, let's shout out everybody who's watching live. I book back train wreck. Justice Fontana, Sheik Ninja, Jake Gunther. Sorry, eighty-seven meatball gay LMAO TJ, Sheik. Everybody else, we're all here. By the way, extra big shout out first to eighty-seven meatball for sending me some seeds to help with my garden. I'm growing a garden outside, and I'll talk a little bit about that later today. As far as my agenda, I have a funny story about Lily sleeping. I won some money. The Vegas Golden Knights are on a dick-sucking spree. Uh, background checks are required now, universally, in Nevada for gun sales. Uh, Chris Haslam came out with a part. Uh, my dog did something funny, and maybe we'll talk about Terry Kennedy as well as discussing the news. I hope you guys have been having a great work week, but now it's time to sit back, crack open a beer, grab a PB&J, maybe some soup, maybe your dog, maybe your bitch, maybe your bitch of a dog, maybe it only has three legs, I don't fucking know, but it's time to relax and enjoy the podcast, so let's go ahead and begin with the news for this week. First article is probably going to be one of the funniest, police, bomb threat at Home Depot was just a warning from a man needing to poop. I have not yet read this article, but I guarantee you this is what happened. Some guy went into Home Depot, looked at the person behind the register, said, oh, I'm about to blow this shit up, and then ran into the bathroom. Oh yeah, I guarantee you that's what happened, because I do that all the time. And if I had a nickel for every time I went to jail for a bomb threat based on me having to poop, I, I, would, I don't have any... I've never gone to jail for that, so I'd still not have any money. But I've said that phrase a lot, okay? It's, okay, this is my funny little joke for chicks, like whenever I'm dating a chick. I even do it with Lily now, and now it sounds like I fucking just... Now it sounds less funny because I've reused the joke so many times, but I do this all the time. The chick goes, ah, uh, babe, I'm gonna go to the bathroom. And then I wait for them to walk away a little bit, and I go, don't blow it up this time. And then it becomes like, <gasps> and then all the people in the room go, like, giggle, hee hee hee. She's gonna poop and then it becomes I'm not fucking pooping man. And it's like yeah, you said that last time whatever take the plunger if you need it <laughs> Um, A Kansas man said he had no <laughs> A Kansas man said he had no intentions of setting off an actual bomb when he told other customers that he was going to blow up the bathroom at Home Depot Turns out he was just talking about a bowel movement. Of course he was. How sheltered and weird would you have to be to think that when somebody says, I'm about to blow up the bathroom, your first thought goes to bomb threat. Now, Americans have just become so afraid of everything, right? We had the 9-11 thing. We got all these shootings and bombings happening all the time. Now a guy can't even go in there and poop without somebody thinking it's a goddamn terrorist attack. Officers were called to the home improvement store in Wichita around 12.15 p.m. 12.15 p.m. Perfect prime pooping time. Okay? The perfect time to be pooping. Monday after an employee reported a bomb threat. The employee told police he was standing at a urinal. So he's already in the bathroom. He was standing at a urinal when a customer came out of the bathroom stall and said, Somebody told me there's a bomb in the building. You need to leave the building. Okay, so this guy is just spreading rumors. The customer said he overheard another man say, <laughs> You all need to get out of here because I'm fixing to blow it up. I'm fixing. Speaking of the cowboy shit, You all need to get out of here because I'm fixing to blow it up. <laughs> fixing to blow him up. Y'all better get out of here, cause I'm low on the toilet paper and I'm about to blow him up. About to blow this motherfucker up. I got a bomb in my asshole. TSA ain't got shit on me. I'm about to blow this motherfucker down, Pookie. <laughs> it's fucked up to me because it's like a it's like a terrible version of uh like the telephone game where you say one thing and it's, somebody says the other thing. 
I don't know. Because the first person's like, I'm going to blow it up. And then the next person's like, this guy's got a bomb. No one can just... <laughs> you can't just take a shit in peace. Also, another thing I don't really like. I don't like when people, strangers, talk to me in the bathroom. I don't like it. It's weird. It's embarrassing. It's weird. It's like, why are you talking? Why are you so happy to do this? It happens in the bar a lot because people get all drunk. They go in there and they're just like sitting there pissing and they look over and they're like, hey, you watch the Yankees today? And you're like, dude, no. What the fuck? No. I'm peeing. My dick's out. Get away from me. Especially if there's no divider in the middle. Because now I don't know if your eyes are wandering. I got to look at your eyes extra hard. Fuck you. You looking at my dick? I'm fixing to blow it up. <laughs> Police later identified the man who gave the warning. He reportedly told the officer, I had no intention of causing such alarm. The man said another person understood the joke and laughed because they knew it was just a polite warning to other patrons of the bathroom. Home Depot does not want to press any charges. No, of course not. Why would they want to press charges on a guy that's taking a doo-doo? The Wichita Police Department later shared a link to an article with the caption, Can anyone relate LOL? So I got a funny story about me almost shitting my pants. It was right when I met Lily and she was moving. I was helping her move. So we had probably only known each other for like a month or so. And she lived way, way up north. Actually, northeast. East. She lives way up east. Wherever. She lived far away. So I'm up at this bar. I run into this bar. I'm dying, dude. I'm driving down the street and it, it just hit me. I had to shit. And it wasn't like I could hold it for five minutes. It was just like liquid bubbling pain in my stomach, exploding my insides out. So I was like, fuck, dude, I'm not going to make it. I'm looking around, dude. There's nothing. Convenience store. I don't want to risk it on a convenience store because I know once I stand up, it's over. So I need to go somewhere where I know I'll be able to shit. So I see a bar. I'm like, oh, thank God. I pull into the bar. I try to open the door. The door is locked. So here in Las Vegas, after about 10 p.m. or 11, 11 p.m., they lock all the bar doors, and somebody has to, like, ring you in. They have to press a button that will temporarily unlock the door. So I'm sitting there waiting. I'm waving at the camera so they can see that I'm not a robber. I'm like, please, God. I get in there, and I look at the bartender, and it looks fucking familiar. Like, it's a chick who I've known in the past. And I was like, I really need to use the bathroom. Where's the bathroom? And she's, she says the most annoying shit ever. You have to use the bathroom? Okay, well, what's my name then? And I was like, oh my god, I'm gonna fucking die! I'm dead! I'm shitting my pants at the bar! So then, like, I did this shit. You ever seen the movie Limitless? Where you unlock information from back in your past that you would have never otherwise known? Oh, dude. The poop became the Limitless pill. It was a suppository. And it made me remember. And I was like, uh, uh Alyssa! And then she's like, it's over there. And I fucking went, exploded, dude. I, my ass exploded before it touched porcelain. It was exploding everywhere. It exploded everywhere. It took 9,000 square feet of toilet paper to clean that mess. I came out, I came out, dude, like limping and shit. Because I wasn't used, you know when you go to space and you come back all week because your muscles have evaporated and you, you don't you're used to being in space i was used to being filled with shit i walk out of there fucking 14 pounds lighter and i was just like, like stumbling around asshole still on fire so that happened and i can definitely relate you know the article said can i relate yes i can relate and if you're ever in need of like some deep information just have a terrible shit attack also i remember i was taking a math final in college and it was so bad. I, I was I must have had food poisoning or something. Because I'm trying to do this math. And it's really fucking tough math. It's like some advanced fucking calculus bullshit. I'm trying to do this math. And I'm just like stressed out. And I'm being timed. There's a time limit. And it's like, oh, fuck, dude. What am I going to do? And then I, I my stomach's going crazy. And I'm farting. And it's, I'm stinking up the room. But like, they're silent farts. And then I had a silent fart that was like, oh, shit. Like, we're out of air, buddy. Like, now we're getting liquidized. And... I thought I wouldn't be allowed to leave the room. I'm just dying. I'm sweating, fucking pouring with sweat. And then I'm like looking around, like like fidgeting. So I, I feel like I, I look like I'm cheating. I go up there. I was like, I really need to use the bathroom. I fucking, I have to use the bathroom right now. And the teacher was like, all right, cool, whatever. And I went, I used the bathroom. Everything was fine. I took the final. I passed the, the fucking test or whatever, but it was terrible. Yeah, I don't, it's weird that like, 
It's weird that you remember all your shit stories, but you don't always remember the day your son was born. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> um, so yeah, enough about those doo-doo stories. That, that was great, though. So if you're watching this on YouTube, please share with me a story that somewhat relates to this Home Depot doo-doo story. Uh, we've all been there. We've all been in a situation similar to that, I'm sure. Now, next article. Oh, Gay Lameo says, got to fix your diet. Got too many shit stories. Maybe. Maybe I do, maybe I don't. Maybe you got to fix your diet because you don't have any shit stories. You ever think of that, smart guy? Woman whose body was found in a suitcase had called her mother, said she was terrified someone would kill her. I clicked this just because I thought that was an interesting headline. This is not in Las Vegas, by the way. Days before her body was found inside a suitcase near Connecticut Road, Valerie Reyes called her mother terrified someone would kill her. She was really scared, very frightened, her mother said. The 24-year-old had been living in a basement apartment in New Rochelle, New York for some time, but had recently grown anxious and even felt paranoid of being alone there. I'm afraid someone is going to murder me. It's unclear why Reyes was afraid. Sanchez said her daughter didn't mention whether she was scared of anyone in particular. Why wouldn't you ask? You're scared someone's going to murder you. Uh, do you have a name? Or maybe what they look like? Or is it a specific person or a group of people? Mom, no one answers that. No one would ask that question. Tuesday, a group of highway workers found Reyes' body stuffed into a red suitcase in the affluent town of Greenwich, Connecticut, about 14 miles from her apartment. At least three police departments have joined the investigation, but no suspects have been named. Meanwhile, her family and friends are juggling grief and their quest for justice. Missing for a week. Reyes went missing since the morning of January 29th. Neither her family nor the employees at the Barnes & Noble uh, knew where she had been, whatever. Several flyers with photos of Reyes and her description began appearing in New York City, while relatives began making pleas on social media for information. We hope, we had hope that she would come back. That's all we knew. She was in the city, so we thought she was looking for help. Blah, blah, blah. She was last seen wearing a green coat. Doesn't matter. A red suitcase hid her body. A week after Reyes vanished, a group of highway workers who were on routine sweep spotted a red suitcase in a wooded area. The bag was about 15 to 20 feet off the shoulder of the road in a quiet neighborhood. When they opened the bag, they found a woman with her hands and feet bound. Oh, this is scary. Greenwich, with a population of around 63,000, is on the Long Island South about is on the Long Island South, about 35 miles outside New York City. The affluent town is home to hedge fund and financial firms. Who cares? Um, they had not released the manner of death. It could take up to eight weeks. One of the workers was pace, placed on paid leave for taking photos of Rez's body and the crime scene. Is that illegal or something? The victim was a daughter, a sister, and a cousin of a family who is suffering a tremendous loss at this time. This thoughtless and insensitive behavior by an employee is inexcusable. Wait a minute, dude. He just took a picture of a dead body. It's not like he posted it online yelling world star and, and fucking giggling. Like, what the fuck? He probably put it like, uh, found the body or something. What, what the fuck? Anyways. Sooner or later, he will get caught, the mom says. Uh, there's no real information here. I'm trying to get to the information of substance, but I forgot that this was a news article and they don't have any real information. So, so that's really sad, right? I think the mom should feel a little bit like concerned that she never asked, why do you feel like you're going to be killed? No one asked why, who, what, when, where, why? Today on Nickelodeon News. Like what the fuck is wrong with you? Do you know if your daughter was dating anyone? Do you know if there was a co-worker she didn't like? You don't know anything about your fucking daughter? Except that she was very scared and you just hung up? Like, hold on, my telenovela's on. I'll call you back. Bye. Jesus Christ. Next article. Medicinally impaired bus driver. Now, when I read this, I think weed. I think about weed. But it could very, very easily be Xanax or, you know, fucking something else. But when I hear medicinal, <clears throat> I always think weed. I feel like this is about weed. Medicinally. What a weird word to read to it. I tried to read this earlier. I was like, medical, med, medicinally, 
Medic and Alley. Medic and Alley. <laughs> bus driver. Medicinally impaired bus driver arrested after crash near Las Vegas trip kills a pedestrian by Gabriela Benavidez. This is going to be a fucking great one. Las Vegas Metro Police said a woman died after getting hit by a bus near the Palazzo Hotel Casino early Thursday morning. According to Metro Police, officers were called to the area of South Las Vegas Boulevard and Sands Avenue just after 6 a.m. The pedestrian, a 59-year-old woman, was crossing a private drive at 3300 South Las Vegas Boulevard, blah, 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 near a marked crosswalk. Marked. The crosswalk was marked, people. The bus heading north hit the woman on her left side and drove over her. Jeez. The woman was taken to Sunrise Hospital where she died from her injuries. The bus driver, 66-year-old Gregory Patterson, remained on the scene. Police suspected Patterson was impaired by medicinal substances and was arrested. It was the 13th traffic-related death in Metro's jurisdiction in 2019. Okay. Evil One says, that sounds incredibly painful. It does, doesn't it? A bus driving over you and not killing you? You only die later at the hospital? Pretty rough one. If only she was fucking medicinally impaired. It probably would have hurt less. Um, so, I brought this up just to bring up a point that I'm sure a lot of you guys are going to bitch about. Everyone always says, well, no one's ever died because of weed. And I think to myself, there's definitely been... Cars being driven by people that are way more high than they should be who have crashed and died and or killed someone. And this might be an example right here. It's always the really uneducated weed head who goes, listen, man, you would need like 9,000 pounds of weed in your blood for it to ever become like a uh, toxic. What, was I, what am I talking about, man? Listen, man, dude, I drive, I, this, why is it even called bread? Why isn't it just called dough hot? No, listen, man, you can't, I, I drive better when I'm high, dude. Okay, so I, <laughs> that, was, that was the improv. There's always people. <laughs> <laughs> There's always people that are like defending it like uh, I don't understand. LMAO says toast is twice cooked dough. Yes it is. Evil one says I feel like when people say no one has ever died from me weed, they mean directly as an overdose. Yeah, of course, sure. But in that case, very few people die from alcohol every year. You know what I mean? Like there's a lot of fucking car accidents from people that are drunk. But as far as like alcohol overdoses or alcohol withdrawal deaths, it's probably a significantly lower number than what's quoted every day. So why does that, why do weed people feel like they found the magical fucking key? Like, no, dude, I was talking about overdoses, man. It's like, yeah, I get it, motherfucker. Alcohol poisoning is a lot, Steve, says Sheik Ninja. Still thousands. Okay. But if we used that statistic all the time, it wouldn't really defer people from drinking alcohol. If I said, oh, no, dude, a thousand people die from alcohol poisoning every year. And you go, a thousand? <laughs> it's not shit. Where, what, what happened to that fucking 25,000 people a year stat? Okay, let's read. Let's read it. Maybe I'm going to get proven wrong on my own podcast. Drinking too much can harm your health. Excessive alcohol use led to approximately 88,000 deaths. Hold on a minute now. Excessive alcohol use led to those that could still all be car accidents. All of that could still be car accidents. And 2.5 million. It says alcohol use led to. <laughs> so that could still all the all of the every single one of those could still be DUIs. So I'm just saying that why don't we ever have a, a weed statistic like that? Excessive weed use led to approximately blank deaths this year we never hear that because weed people would go fucking crazy they'd shit their goddamn pants and they would they would only say well that's, we didn't cause that dude they would have crashed anyways we didn't crash we didn't make them crash dude they would have crashed anyway we didn't make that like that's all that they would say 
Anyways, we can uh, <laughs> we can look into this a little bit later, maybe during the post show. TJ says six deaths a day from alcohol poisoning. Six deaths a day. That's that's still quite a bit. We will uh, we will dive back into this during the post show because I don't want to learn all this on the fly since we don't have an article right in front of us. So maybe I've been proven wrong. I don't know. If you guys are watching this after the live broadcast here on twitch.tv slash ninja lifestyle, let me know your thoughts. My main, <laughs> my argument was just that the weed people are much easier to like exaggerate, like under exaggerate, like how weed could be led to the cause much more than like alcohol people because alcohol, it's always like overestimated and weed, it's always just, people just say zero. People just say zero. They literally say zero. Weed kills no people. That's what people say all the time. I've seen on Facebook thousands of times people say, weed has never killed a single person ever. Okay, so I'm just going to start saying, alcohol only kills six people a day. That's it. I'm going to start saying that always. And when they go, what about DUIs? I'm going to go, doesn't count. Doesn't count. Not, it, was, it wasn't direct. No, indirect relationship. <laughs> so anyways, just letting you guys know that now. Let's move on to the next article since... Uh, since we've hit a dead end here. <laughs> um, downtown Las Vegas neighbors weigh in on park renovations after homeless problem. I clicked this one because the word problem was in quotes. So let's see what's going on here. Hundred Circle Park in downtown Las Vegas is set to reopen in April after the city renovates it. I actually don't know where this is. City staff closed the park October 2018, when crews started the project, upgrades include concrete work around the park and new fencing around the playground. Okay, you got a playground. Anywhere that has a playground should not have a bunch of homeless people around it. Fair enough. Neighbors said the changes are overdue, but worried. A few upgrades will not fix that problem. There are a lot of homeless people, Tina said. They walk around and go into empty houses for shelter. They definitely do. Pryor said the homeless people who stayed at the park moved a block away near the historic Huntridge Theater while crews worked on the renovations. They moved moved away. They switched houses. She worries that will change in April. As soon as it opens, they're going to go back. There's nothing you can do to keep, you know, homeless people away from a place that is soft. You know what I mean? Soft grass. Uh, neighbors hope the changes, like the added concrete will discourage people from sleeping in the area. I hope it gets better, Sarah Collins said. I hope homeless people get help, and I hope it helps the community because we don't have parks around here. That is true. Not a lot of parks in that area. City of Las Vegas officers services for homeless people. Wait. Okay, offer. I can't read. The City of Las Vegas offers services for homeless people, including the Courtyard Homeless Resource Center. I don't know what the fuck that is. Whatever. So this article actually means nothing. I thought this would be an interesting article. I was wondering how they were going to approach the uh, the defending of homeless problem in quotes without being offensive to homeless people. Switch Flip says, I mean, no offense to homeless people, but most of them are shotting up heroin. Yeah, in this area, they definitely are. Uh, they're getting weird. Definitely getting weird. Last article of the day. Nevada, okay, this, I read this this morning, I had to find this article, and we, it's, it's a podcast, so we gotta talk about guns a little bit here. Steve Sisolak has signed into law a measure closing a loophole. This was actually never a loophole, it was designed this way, I don't know why they're calling it a loophole. You can kinda already see the bias in this article. That allows gun buyers to avoid background checks by going through unlicensed gun sellers. I also think this is really biased because they wrote unlicensed gun sellers. Here's how the law actually worked. If you're not buying a brand new gun from a gun store and it's just a private sale, since pistols here, handguns, rifles, since there's no registering of a handgun, there needs to be no additional, like, you can private sales or you can sell a gun the same way you could sell a CD player or a computer. You just, you give it to the person, they give you the money. They did that because the metro stations here were overwhelmed because you used to have to go to a metro station to sell a gun, but it was taking up too many resources from the police offices, and you know they they were cutting costs and shit. So they just said, you know what? 
which is going to make it easier for people to buy and sell guns to each other privately. Now, the way they write it here, they're calling that a loophole. And instead of saying private sales, they're saying unlicensed gun sellers because that sounds more seedy. That sounds more evil. He signed the bill Friday afternoon, surrounded by lawmakers who supported the measure. The bill came shortly after the state assembly approved the measure. He described it as a historic moment for the state and thanked lawmakers and the survivors of gun violence for their work. A historic moment for the state. It's been like this before. Like, th what they're saying right now used to be a thing. So, to say it's a historic moment for the state, like, I'm, <laughs> I'm overwhelmed by the bias of this fucking article. The legislation was fiercely opposed by Republicans who argued the legislation was not s specific and would not quell gun violence. Now, I don't think this is a bad law, okay? I really don't think this is a bad law. I just think, it, number one, it came out of nowhere. Number two, there was like there was no time to like vote on this shit. It just happened overnight, boom. So now we have to pay for our own background checks. And it's also, it's interesting <laughs> that uh, I think they're doing this to hurt, like to hurt guns, to sort of like hurt gun gun owners and slow gun sales. But what people are going to have to do now, especially uneducated people, rather than go get their own background check and pay for their own background check, they're going to go to gun stores and pay a fee to gun stores to get background checks. Nevada legislator, legislature has passed a bill requiring background checks on private gun sales and transfers. The assembly approved the measure Friday, blah, blah, blah. Lawmakers heard hours of public comment on the bill earlier this week that is considered a fix to a 2016 gun background check measure approved by voters. They call it a loophole again right here, good. Democrats proposed the new measure after former Republican Brian Sandoval and former Alec whatever said it cannot be enforced. Republicans are, are accusing Democrats of hurrying their legislation. Okay, that's what I was saying. This shit came out of nowhere, which opponents say is overly broad and infringes on Second Amendment rights. Now, I also heard now, this could just be random chit-chat that I saw on Twitter or whatever. That this guy, Sisolak, also wants to ban bump stocks. So I think I think it's already federally banned now. He wants to ban suppressors, which are already, I think, you need a special tax stamp to have. And also ban uh, assault-style weapons, which is always annoying to me because anyone who even knows the slightest bit about any gun would never use a term like assault-style weapons. Because whenever you ask them, what does that mean? They give you an even more vague definition. Uh, what, uh, what do you mean by assault style weapon? Uh, I mean like military grade. Oh, like tanks? Yeah, I, I, it'd be tough for me to get a tank. No, I mean like AR-15. Oh, okay, like name three other assault style weapons. Uh, the AK-47 and... Uh, uh, exactly, motherfucker. They're all... Every fucking... Gun right now is <laughs> fits what whatever definition you're gonna try to come up with. Being uneducated, you're you're gonna fucking you're not gonna be able to back up what you say. Anyways, so the rest of this page I guess is not gonna load. This is the end. So I guess the issue is um, I told Lily that, and I was like, yeah, dude, like I think it's fucked up. They just made this law out of nowhere, and she goes, well, it's not that bad of a law. And I said, hey, remember on your birthday when I bought you a gun? Now. I can't do that anymore. Now, if I wanted to surprise you, I would have to drag you into a gun store or drag you over to a metro station, get a background check on you. I would have all of your background information, which maybe there's something in your past you don't want me to know about. Maybe you had a DUI. Maybe you had a domestic violence or something 10 years ago. In which case, then, I would not be able to give you a gun. Which maybe, you know what? Maybe I just did the math. Maybe maybe this is a good thing. But I just mean... uh. It's just kind of inter interesting. This, sh this shit just came out of nowhere. And again, I think it's a good thing, but I think hiding this from everybody, like like not giving anybody any time to fucking debate this shit was kind of strange. And also, again, I'm down with this law, but I, I truly believe that everything's sort of a slippery slope, right? So one guy goes out and kills a bunch of people using an AR-15. Suddenly, all AR-15s are banned. Okay, it happened with bump stocks. 
They banned bump stocks. A lot of people had that shit. And what happens to the people that bought them? Legally, legally went to the store, legally bought it. Now it's illegal and you have to destroy it. You're, by law, you have like three months to destroy it. That's kind of fucked up that now like, it's basically them just saying, hey, you paid a lot of money for something. Let's throw that money away. Because if the government really wanted to, you know, like take a little bit of responsibility, like, okay, we're going to do a, a turn it in program. Turn in the bump stock. Uh, bring your receipt. We'll pay you back for it. We get the bump stocks. We destroy them because we made the fucking law. I don't know. Anyways. Well, that's the news. <laughs> I don't really know how I feel about the law. Um, I've always said that back when I first got into guns here in Nevada, you had to have your handguns registered to your name. And when you sold them to another person, it would be in your best interest to transfer that registration. So you would want to go to the metro station and do a transfer. It wouldn't cost any money. It would just, they would sign a paper, they would sign, you, you'd sign a paper, it would get notarized as like a bill of sale, and then uh, every time their social security number came up, it would say, hey, they have this gun. I thought that was cool. You know, for me being like, hey man, like super, super pro-gun and shit, I want, you know, less laws and shit, I think that was a fair law. Because I don't want anyone shooting someone and then having my name come up on it. So I thought that was totally fair. I don't know. Anyways, so uh, last night, me and Lily went gambling. I won some money. First, I won 120 bucks, and then I won 60 bucks. I got out of there about 60 bucks richer than I went in, so I was really happy. So we got a bunch of free drinks. Uh, Lily was getting a lot of free drinks. Got fucked up. So we go to bed. You know, we sleep in the same bed, and she starts snoring. She never snores, usually. Almost never snores. So I'm shaking her, wiggling her. I'm like, hey, fucking, I can't sleep. You're snoring on me. It wasn't like this, not, it wasn't like, it was just like this loud breathing. And uh, I'm like pushing on her. I turn the light on. I'm like, Lily, wake up. You're snoring. Doesn't wake up at all. Just dead, cold, rock, dead body. Just dead, sitting there. So eventually I got her over, rolled her over. <laughs> And then uh, she stops snoring and everything. And then it becomes too quiet. <laughs> so then I'm like, oh, fuck, dude. Like, <laughs> what? what if she's dead? <laughs> so then I get over there. I'm like, I like, I'm like poking her in the face and shit. I like open her eye. Like, I pulled her eye open. And it's just like, some, <laughs> looks like some fucking boss from Link to the Past. <laughs> just not, not motionless eyeball just there. <laughs> and I told her the story. She had no fucking idea. So, <laughs> Frank, yeah, poking in the face is always like the one you got to do. Poke, poke in the face. What's going on here? Hey, hello. Hey, wake up. Anyways, uh, I thought that was a funny story. The Vegas Golden Knights suck balls. I think we've lost like five in a row at home. So that's terrible. Something really funny happened last night that maybe you guys won't think is funny, but I thought it was really funny is I opened the door to let Koopa go take a shit. He went outside. He came back in and he brought in a moth. And a moth came in. It's like a little, little butterfly kind of thing. If you guys don't know what a moth is, it's like a little butterfly. So anyways, the butterfly comes in. Koopa sees it. He looks up. He follows it across the room. Like It flies over to the light. And then uh, <laughs> he's, like, he's like fucking with it. I see him, dude. The little butterfly fucking. And he snaps it. Boom. Eats that motherfucker. Bow. Then he looks at me. I'm just laughing. I'm like, dude, you got it. You fucked him up. And then he opens his mouth. Uh, and the thing goes, brrr, just flies, flies right out of his mouth. The big, bad, like, angry, terrible pit bull wouldn't even hurt a moth. And it's that's not even like a, uh, <laughs> it's not even like a, <laughs> a funny phrase anymore. Like, it's true. He wouldn't even hurt a moth. He ate the moth. You know, had a little taste of it. Opened his mouth. Brrr, Moth just flew completely away. The moth was in his mouth for five seconds. Completely in his mouth. I'm laughing. I'm like, hey, you got him, dude. Like, tell him good job. Opened his mouth. This just fucker just flew right away. <laughs> and I'm looking at him. I'm looking at the dog, and he's just like, yeah, like, what do you want from me? <laughs> yeah, meatball, yeah, for the sport. He's just, he, it's like sport fishing. He just let it go. He caught it, looked at it, tasted it, let it go. <laughs> I thought that was pretty funny. 
So anyways, background checks. I'm building a garden. And uh, again, shout out to 87 Meatball for sending me a bunch of pepper seeds and I think even a lettuce seed, which I have no idea actually how lettuce grows. I don't know if it pops out of the ground and then forms a ball or if I have to dig it up. But I'll find out because I have seeds now. And I also found out how easy it is to grow herbs. Like, I watched a how-to video. You really don't even have to dig holes. You just get this bag of seeds, sprinkle them, sprinkle them in a line, you know, do a couple of hand jumps, and then they're good to go. And I've heard also there's a lot of different herbs that are fucking hard to kill. So even if I'm a bad... Even if I'm a bad gardener, I should, I should be able to handle cilantro, basil, chives, shit like that. So that's like, it's a good sign. Good sign for me. I think I got it. Only thing I got to get now is this uh, mixed fertilizer for my bigger plants, and then I'll be good to go. In other news, Chris Haslam came out of the video part. I'm sure a lot of you skateboarders want to talk about that since we never talk about skateboarding on this podcast if you guys have not seen the chris haslam part you must absolutely have to see it i think it's on the thrasher site it has some crazy crazy tricks really interesting tricks and i always do this thing where if i don't see a part from you in a year i just assume that you died and quit skating and become a tractor driver or like i just assume that that you're gone i assume that you're just out of here forever turns out he was just out there in uh in europe getting good scrub <laughs> His very first trick, I think, was like a 20-stair dark slide with, like, a, a curve in the ledge, which is amazing to me. Then again, I think I could do it. <laughs> I think there's a lot of tricks that are crazy, and I think the dark slide was nuts. But there's also this part of me that's, like, I'm kind of like a hater in the sense where I say things like, uh, he found the spot first. You know what I mean? So he did the first fucking dark slide. Remember back in the day, um, who was it? Rodney Mullen dark slid like a nine stair, but the ledge was like three inches tall. So he basically dark slid a curb. And then at the, like, sometimes I feel like if you find the perfect spots, you can do fucking anything. Sheik Ninja says, he who throws the first dark slide. Exactly. Now, not to say that's anything bad, and then again, I'm also the first guy to watch a trick on Ninja Review, say that I can do it, then I'll attempt it on Flat Bar Friday and completely fail for an hour straight. So, I don't know. I just think uh, the part was really good. I'm hating on the dark side. I don't know how this became. I was actually going to make this topic all about me sucking his dick and saying it was a great part, but now I feel like I've just come off as a hater. I'm sorry. Erased everything I just said. The part's really fucking good. You got to go see it gotta check it out it's it's uh what does trump always say it's fantastic what does he always say he always says some word it's phenomenal fantastic phenomenal exquisite what is his word he always has a word people in the chat help me out there's always some word when he does this is it fantastic phenomenal fantastic uh no one knows okay sometimes i feel like it's the lag it's the lag that people don't know but it's just no one knows it's it's I know the YouTube will know, for sure. Terrific, terrific, that was it. Thank you, Frank. Terrific. The video part was terrific. Terrific. Uh, Terry Kennedy, there's some drama happening with him, and I have no idea. I don't have any information on the, on the shit, so this is going to be something for you guys to go check out on your own time. I don't know. I don't know about T. Kennedy. I don't know what's going on with him. But uh, I guess he quit Baker, maybe. I think he quit Baker before, and then he got back on. This time, he was a little more loud about it, said he doesn't like Andrew Reynolds. And I talked about this a little bit during the post or the pre-show, excuse me. And here's my thing. I think a lot of people think they're more famous than they actually are. So they think that they can go on these outbursts and shit, and their career won't suffer at all. And I think that applies to me. Like, sometimes I feel like that, or at least I did, you know, years ago when I was getting a lot of views and money off YouTube. I thought to myself, like, fuck it, dude. I actually on stream one day said uh, I could take a shit on <laughs> I could take a shit on YouTube and still make money. And it wasn't like me being cocky. It was just me getting really, really comfortable. And I think especially at his level, imagine him, his level of fame was f way fucking higher than mine. I don't think it's a cocky thing. I think it's like uh, like you lose the fear 
like you start to think that you're so high up that you cannot fall. You know, that you can never fall back to square one. And I'm not saying that is going to happen, but I think that might be fueling this. Because whenever you see someone who's not afraid to burn bridges, but also at the same time, think about TK, he's not going to be a top 10 skater ever again with how crazy skateboarding is. He's never going to be top 10 again. So to have that much energy and be that down to burn a bridge, but not have the skills to back it up, it's kind of like leads me to believe like, dude, what, what are you thinking? Kind of. You know, even if you go start your own company, yeah, you're going to make a little bit of money. You're going to sell, you know, fucking, what, 5,000 decks, 10,000 decks, cool. And then when the hype dies and people are over it, then they're over it. Especially if you think about what's hot now. This gangster shit's not hot no more. You know, don't be mad at me. Be mad at the motherfucking negotiating your deal. See what I did there. <laughs> See what I did there. That shit doesn't fly right now. It's all about being nerdy and tight pants and shit. Like, that shit came and went. So if, if that happens to be his, if that, I'm just like, you know, like hypothesizing, if that was one of his options, that's already going to be a short lived option right away. And I feel like some people get so hyped and confident in themselves that they don't really look before they leap. Then again, what if Andrew Reynolds really did some dumb shit to him? What if Andrew Reynolds really took advantage of him? What, I mean, there could be two sides of the story. What if, uh, what if he did say some dumb shit? Or what if he tried to pay him unfairly, like a really small amount? TK has a bunch of fans. He has a lot of pull. There's a lot of people that are going to take his side no matter what. But I think most people are just curious about what's going on. It's also strange to me that uh, it's weird. Like, I guess it's really not that weird. Because I've had friends for a long time that even after 10 years, dude, just a flip of a finger, dude, we could just not be friends. Boom. Bang. Just like that, you know, you, you say some shit that I don't fucking like and it's over the line, you're out of here, dude. I got other friends and me being your friend for 10 years doesn't make you invincible to being cut off. So in a lot of ways, a lot of ways it's weird that these guys could be friends for so long since TK was a kid and now have such, such strong beef where they always say things like don't go into business with your friends and that's kind of what, what that is, right? Reynolds is is the boss, and TK is the the, the the writer, the talent, the pull. Then again, um, maybe you guys disagree. I don't think TK will ever have as much pull in skateboarding as Reynolds. Even outside of like money and business owning, if we just talk about uh, the better skater or even who's had the most fans – kind of thing. Like I'm talking about sellability here. Like who's the most valuable? I don't think TK could ever touch Reynolds. I think Reynolds is going to be the name. I think Reynolds is going to be a name like like Rodney Mullen or Tony Hawk. I think it kind of it kind of goes in that that order, right? It's going to go Rodney Mullen, Tony Hawk, Andrew Reynolds, you know, and then maybe Nigel Houston. It's going it's going to it's going to be something like that. So for TK to to burn that bridge I would think it would have to be something, some, like a really big deal. I would think it would have to be a really big deal. And that's my thoughts on that. This is all speculation. I don't know anything. I've never met either of those guys. I don't know how they are off camera, you know, off screen. But uh, it's definitely a, a big move. It's definitely a really big move for TK to publicly call out Reynolds. And this is the second time this has happened. I know this happened a few years ago. I don't remember the circumstances, but I remember I did a video on it. And that video is actually getting views now. And I think people I think people are bringing up my video from whatever, four or five years ago, and thinking I'm talking about what's happening now. And uh, <laughs> I think that's funny. That's interesting. You got to check the dates on the YouTube video, people. Anyways, that's it for today's episode. I am going to stay online for a bit on the post show. If you guys are watching this on YouTube, I would like to hear your guys' thoughts on this whole gun law change. I'd like to hear your guys' thoughts on if you've ever blown it up, your funniest doo-doo stories, and uh, your thoughts on medicinal death, if you can die medicinally. And I'm maybe waiting to see if uh, maybe next week we get an update on this to see what was medicinally wrong with him. Because if it ends up being Xanax, I'm going to feel real stupid for making this whole article about weed, aren't I? Fucking idiot. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's go ahead and shout everybody out. Let me get a hell yeah in the chat. I don't have a trivia question for you guys this week. 
because I am a dumb idiot. You guys got to remind me on Discord. Please do that in the future. Extra big shout out to everyone who stuck around till the end. Gay LMAO, Frank Calandra, Assassination TV, Sheik Ninja, DX Man, I Book, Byak, uh, Sheik Trainwreck, 87 Meatball, Justice Fontana, Old Man Skateboards, Toaster Flip, First DJ Sketch, KOBJJ, Switch Flip, and more. Again, stick around. Uh, if you guys are watching us on Sunday, have a great week. If you're watching it right now, have a great weekend. Don't drink too much and don't smoke too much weed because weed can occasionally lead to you killing an old lady in the middle of the street violently and painfully. So don't do that. And uh, I will see you guys next time. Kuna Matata, bitches, let's play that goddamn intro. <laughs> Dude, um, uh, I'm, dude, if it's weed, and it, what, what about the bread, though, dude, and if you're born deaf, like, what language do you think in, dude, and, like, what would happen if Pinocchio said, my nose is growing, or, like, would it, what, how do you bake bread twice if, if there's no such thing as double jeopardy, dude?